Hello, welcome to BBC World News. Ukraine says Russian forces have launched an all-out assault on the Azovstal steelworks in the city of Mariupol. Around 200 civilians are still believed to be sheltering inside. Moscow says humanitarian corridors will open shortly for three days to allow people to leave. A Ukrainian commander claims Russian troops have entered the tunnels under the site to try to crush the last pocket of resistance in Mariupol. Mark LaBelle has the latest. Ten weeks in, Russia testing Ukraine's resolve at the Azovstal steelworks, intensifying its assault, as this unverified footage released by pro-Russian separatists shows with what looks like thermobaric or vacuum bombs, as Ukraine's Azov regiment claims Russians have entered the southern port city's plant. There are heavy, bloody battles. I am proud of my soldiers who make superhuman efforts to contain the pressure of the enemy. I am grateful to the whole world for the colossal support to the garrison of Maripol. But that garrison's families are worried, and there are fears too for the 200 trapped civilians, including 30 children, still hunkering in the plant, alongside thousands of others in need of rescue from elsewhere in the shattered city. The second phase of our evacuation operation in Maripol ended today with 344 people successfully evacuated from the city and the outskirts of Zaporizhia. Our team will greet them, like the 150 who came from Azovestal, and they will get the necessary support from our state. Russia's military says it will open humanitarian corridors out of the besieged Azovstal steel complex for three days from Thursday. But to pressure Moscow to stop the fighting, the EU wants to halt the import of Russian oil by the end of the year. But it must have support from states heavily reliant on Russian oil, like Slovakia and Hungary, who say they can't agree to that, even with the offer of an extra year to comply. What we've seen today on the table is uh, very far from uh, what we can uh, live with and go with, not uh, for the uh, reasons of political taste or uh, any kind of uh, taste-like issue, but it's simply the hard physical facts on the ground. There is no substitute. But Western countries are still intent on rearming Ukraine. As Russia continues its attacks in the east, these strikes in Dnipro five minutes after an air raid siren, leaving residents with little time to scramble for cover. Mark Lobel, BBC News. Let's talk to our correspondent Joe Inwood, who's in the western Ukrainian city of Lviv. Hello to you, Joe. Uh, it's very difficult, I can imagine, to get information out of what's uh, going on at Azovstal Steelworks, but what is the latest that we're hearing? <laughs> So we understand that this fighting, heavy fighting that's been reported over the last few hours is continuing. The bombardment as well. We've heard ever since, really, ever since the humanitarian corridor that was set up by the United Nations over the weekend, ever since that closed, that bombardment has continued, we understand, intensified. Uh, and we've, ha we've had that report from the commander on the inside saying that there is bloody, brutal fighting taking place. I guess that shouldn't surprise us. That was one of the reasons that President Putin said he wasn't going to have the plant stormed in the first place is because of the terrible cost it would inflict on the lives of Russian soldiers. Of course, Ukrainian soldiers and maybe even more importantly, the civilians, children trapped within. We don't have clear information of their fate. As you say, clear information, reliable information is very, very hard to come by in this uh, section of the conflict. And those words from Russia that it is going to uh, implement a ceasefire to allow more civilian evacuations from Thursday today for three days or so. I mean, can we take that at face value, given how uh, we haven't seen that happen in previous weeks? I think we could say, we could potentially take at face value that they say they are going to do it. Whether it will have any positive outcome, I'd be very, very sceptical. Let's remember that we heard talk of civilian corridors, of humanitarian corridors, for days and days and days before the successful one over the weekend. Now, all the previous ones failed. The reason was that they were either unilateral or had no independent guarantor. What we saw over the weekend, the reason it worked, is the United Nations did it, the International Committee of the Red Cross did it. That's why it worked. This is going to be another unilateral ceasefire by the Russians. Uh, and given 
the complete lack of trust that both sides have for each other, specifically the fighters and civilians inside the plant, given that lack of trust, the idea that in the middle of this assault people would decide actually this is the point at which we'll take the Russians at their word, I'd be very, very surprised. But as ever with this conflict, you'd be a fool to make any firm predictions. Anything is possible, but I think it is unlikely.